We've been working with EVGA for a few days on troubleshooting GTX 1080 FTW VRM heat issues, including independent validation of EVGA's two solutions for owners of affected cards. That article was posted last night. You can see it on the screen here or hit the link in the description below for the full thing. And the article included thermal images and testing of cards with and without thermal pads, as well as cards with and without the vBIOS update. We'll be recapping all of that here. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by AMD FreeSync devices, including this $400 LG 34UM68-P ultrawide display, which is a 2560 by 1080 display. You can learn more in the link below. If you're not sure what's going on, we've got two articles. One of them recaps the issue. Basically, Tom's Hardware in Germany, Tom's DE, found that some of the EVGA cards they were testing, the 1080 FTW in the case of what we're validating, were hitting temperatures of around 114C when looking at the back of the card, and that's for the VRM temperatures specifically. VRMs, by the way, can sustain pretty high temperatures, so uh, we'll talk about if it's good or not in a moment, but it's not the same as a GPU where your limit is really like 100 celsius or something around that range so tom saw that we posted an article recapping the issue we spoke with buildzoid and overclocker to talk about the vrm and what it's capable of and now just last night published an article that looks at the thermals using thermal imaging of a card without a solution so this is the stock card that shipped originally no thermal pads between the back plate and the back of the card and, uh, and no thermal pads where they were added with the fix, which is this version that's got a thermal pad mod to it. And we also looked at some vBio stuff. So with Tom's article, they saw VRM temperatures up to around 114C. VRAM was also pretty high. And this was a result of EVGA's decision to skip thermal pads for some of their cards. Affected cards are shown on the screen now. And all of these are also applicable to receive a vBIOS update or free thermal pad mod from EVGA. We'll talk about this more in our in-depth testing piece, but first note that the VRM can handle well over 100C in worst case scenarios. T-junction of EVGA's VRM is about 150C with ambient at 125C. The power stages are recommended at 100C by on semi in their data sheet, so that is directly from the supplier, or a 125C T case. Still, hitting 114 Celsius is really approaching a fine line where poor conditions could trip a runaway thermal scenario, especially since the backplate was effectively acting as a hotbox before applying thermal pads. The backplate and the baseplate were mostly just trapping heat with no interface to transfer the buildup from the power stages or FETs to the heatsink itself. But we've got Buildzoid joining us in a few days to talk about this in greater depth, and I'm currently running endurance tests on the 1080 FTW with and without thermal pads and we'll be doing so in both torture and real world scenarios. We'll be using poor airflow cases also for further validation, and the goal is to determine whether or not the EVGA 1080 FTW was ever at risk of burning its power delivery system. EVGA's solution has been to supply free thermal pads to users to either apply themselves or they can do a swap with EVGA to get them applied or a new card from EVGA if they're really concerned. But when I talked to EVGA's team last night, we were also informed that the company will be applying a BIOS update. And this BIOS update, it doesn't change anything other than the fan speed curve, the fan RPM. So these fans will spin more aggressively with that update instead of an RPM of around 1600 to 1700 in, for example, a high load scenario, fur mark or a game, where you're basically hitting about a 55%, maybe 60% fan speed. Uh, instead of that fan speed of around 1700, the new update for the cards will push the fan speed to 2200 RPM, which is a pretty decent increase, really. So we've got thermal testing. I've imaged these cards, and I also did noise tests to see how that RPM change impacts the performance, and we're able to test both of these cards with and without the backplate, uh, so we'll go into all of that stuff now. Because our temperature measurements are through the back of the PCB, the actual temperature may be a few degrees higher on the front side where the VRM is. We used a thermocouple to probe some of the VRM components directly and saw a delta of about 4 to 5 Celsius against the rear side measurement. Here are two side-by-side -side thermal images of EVGA's 1080 FTW VRM close up with max temperature indicators on the screen as taken at an ambient of 22 Celsius. The left image is before EVGA's BIOS update, the right image is after the BIOS update with a more aggressive fan RPM, and this is without the thermal pads applied yet anyway. Between the two, we're seeing a difference of about 14 Celsius resultant of the jump from 1600, 1700 
to 2200 RPM. And this brings the VRM temperature down to well within reasonable operating range. Remember, they can run hotter than other silicon components that you're used to. And it's still warmer than some competition, but certainly not overheating. The fan speed change will bring the ACX cooled 1080 FTW cards down well under maximum safe specification once coupled with the thermal pads especially. But the new fan speed will curve to hit 2200 RPM or a jump to about 80% of total fan speed if using afterburner and precision from the original about 60% max 65, but generally 60. We've performed initial DB testing to look at the change in noise output versus the fan RPM. The test platform used for this noise test used all passive cooling. The CPU and power supply were passively cooled in an open air test bench with no fans attached. The only device making noise was this video card and the noise floor of the room is about 26 dB and has already been accounted for in these metrics. Test methodology is defined more heavily in our GP reviews on the website, though we'll outline it all in more detail in the next article that researches this stuff a bit more heavily. Noise is at about 38.6 dB for the GTX 1080 FTW before the vBIOS mod when the VRM was much hotter and the fan speed was lower, and so the fan was auto-controlled its peak around 1600 RPM in this test scenario. The post vBIOS change simulated based on EVGA's direct advice to GN by simply changing the fan RPM to 2200 manually is at 47.1 dB or a perceived increase to the user that is just shy of a 2x gain in volume. We'll talk more about noise levels and the perception of increase shortly in the next content again once we've got more time to really test the cards within enclosures and in the open air bench. This final look is another side-by-side -side thermal image, this time with the GTX 1080 FTW with thermal pads installed and the original fan speed on one side versus thermal pads installed and the new fan speed update on the other side. So you've basically got both solutions here or just one of them with the thermal pads. Just installing the thermal pads and leaving the fan and BIOS alone, temperature is close to 85 Celsius when probed through the back plate, but a direct thermal couple probe to the PCB shows us closer to 90 Celsius, still as a significant reduction from the original stock model of the card, and with both applied we're nearing 80 C on the back side, which is pretty damn good overall and actually becoming competitive with Twin Frozer and other coolers. So as always, we'll have more depth in the article below. It's already published. It's basically this stuff, just with a bit more text around it to explain what's going on. I am working on actively doing some more tests. We endurance tested one of these cards already. Need to do the other. Need to do a couple torture tests and MITx or poor airflow ATX cases, things like that. So we'll be back. Subscribe to make sure you catch the next version, uh, the next look for this couple part series where I'm going to be joined by Buildzoid. We'll talk about the VRM, what its capabilities are, things like that. But so far, EVGA solutions are looking good. So these changes they've made, uh, just the fan update alone is pretty helpful, but you do get a big noise increase. So I would recommend taking their free thermal pads because you don't have to pay for it. They'll ship them to you. You apply it yourself. We will be filming today so by the time you see this it'll be just hours away we'll be filming a, a tutorial on how to install those thermal pads it's pretty easy but if you're uncomfortable EVJ will do it for you or they can even do a uh, basically a cross RMA exchange where they ship you a card as yours is going back to them so you're not out of a card for too long so that's the news that's what's going on with EVJ's cards more in the near future as always subscribe for more content patreon link in the postal video hit that if you want to help us directly by supporting us monthly and links in the description below. I'll see you all next time.